fantasy and some flights. Exploring the realms of beer, board games, books, and bourbon. Welcome to another episode of Fireside and Some Flights. I'm Nelson. I'm Dalton. And we are back. <laughs> we are been, back. It's, it's We're doing it. <laughs> We're doing it. It's been a couple of weeks since our last episode, and that's uh, that's mainly my fault. I unfortunately got the coronavirus, and it kicked my ass. So yeah. <laughs> we're doing. You got the Rona. You're gonna hear. You're gonna hear some coughing, and I apologize. I'm gonna do my best to edit it out. But mm-hmm. we do really like doing this. We're probably gonna do a couple of firesides, just back to back, because I have no energy. Um, mm-hmm. We are remote. I am no longer contagious, but. I also did not want to drive to your house because yeah. I don't have that kind of energy. But <laughs> just po- <laughs> I apologize in advance for the coughing, which is something I find myself saying a lot recently. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm going to do my best to edit. But I am really glad that we are able to be here and record again. How you for doing, sure? Man? And we're both we're both like very thankful. Just that while you did have a bad go at it, there was no there was no hospital time. You know, there was nothing like that that could that was very serious and, and life threatening. Um, in your case, which we're both very thankful for. But but yeah, again, uh, you know, we have had to take the time off uh, partly for Nelson's energy and partly for for <laughs> how difficult it is to actually speak <laughs> and breathe and do right. normal things with this uh, with this pandemic with this whatever you want to call it with this virus there we go with this virus so. <laughs> yeah yeah so um, what's really frustrating and the not the worst part about it because it, it was pretty rough but one of the worst things about it is i missed my first vaccine shot because i had the coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> so like i had it scheduled and i missed it <laughs> because I, I got it like a week before i was like well this sucks this is not great timing yeah and actually because of that because you got sick and i knew that your vaccine was right there or like was coming up I, I went and looked it up i was like when do you like when can you get like vaccinated <laughs> and it's something like 10 days or something like after your last sem- i don't know if you've looked it up but um yeah like after your quarantine or something like that yeah i i can get it now and i i plan on getting it here in about a week but yeah it will kick my ass yeah just because sure. you you'll you get your symptoms after the vaccine are a lot worse than if you didn't have the vaccine so i'm looking forward to that that's gonna be fun so but anyways uh what's on your flight tonight what's on my flight i actually i'm doing something a little different we usually we usually drink things that we have already you know had on the podcast uh for the fireside episodes for this one i'm not going to go into all of the details for it i was wanting to use it as like a teaser for the next time that you and i are together Ooh, i know i have uh whistle pig which is a they're (laughs) <laughs> they're known kind of for their for their right first of all yeah funny name um, <laughs> but they're known kind of for their rise and so i talked about in the i think in the red rising episode about how we have had a slew of bourbons and so i had gotten this rye i was hoping that our next episode we would be in person so we could try it together but this is their this is their whistle pig piggyback is the name of the actual <laughs> rye That's and it's clever. a uh, yeah right and it's a six year and it's 100 percent rye mash so i'm looking forward to sharing it with you oh interesting yeah. you like it I do like this one quite a bit, actually. So good. When Very we good. break it down, yeah, I'm we'll, excited to try it. Yeah, for sure. We'll break it down and we'll talk more about Whistle Pig and who they are and everything. But um, for now, just you know, we'll just like put it out there as a teaser for the for the next, <laughs> I guess, full length episode. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Nelson's um, drinking cough syrup. Oh. Yes, I. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I have my tea. Nice. And my cough drops. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> that, that's what's on my flight tonight. So we're we're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can make like a it's a hotty toddy, right? Where it's like it's like whiskey and hot tea. I don't oh, know who invented okay. it, but it's like it's a thing. And I've had it, and it's like it's a little intimidating just because like it's going in hot tea, <laughs> and so like, yeah, it's like super like vapory, you know? Like, like oh, it's yeah. not even that alcoholic in oh. the drink, but like it hits your nose like super hard. It's just oh, hot well, alcohol. that's good. I can't smell anything, so that's right. that should be fine, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try that then. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Nelson and Dalton's tips for getting through the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> tips for making the best of your experience with the coronavirus. <laughs> Speaking of tips to make it uh, through the coronavirus, or the best way to make it through the coronavirus, I have been watching a lot of TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how do you like that segue? 
Nice. But, so I haven't really been ones. reading or doing like any audio books, but I mm-hmm. have, I've been watching some movies and I've been watching. Okay. So yeah. So what, what me and my wife did, we actually started bef- right before we got the, the coronavirus and then right. the time allowed us to complete, but we watched through the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe in timeline order. Wow. So in release order, but starting with Captain America, okay, going to Captain Marvel all the way through. Mm-hmm. And then yesterday we actually finished the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So we watched the the TV shows or the two Disney Plus TV shows um, yep. as well. So WandaVision and then uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And watching them through in timeline order is fantastic. Disney Plus has that as an option where they lay them out in timeline order for you. Yeah. We we went out and found the Spider-Mans and watched those um, in order as well. Mm-hmm. But I have always enjoyed the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Um, they've always been kind of, you know, just kind of fun to watch to me. But I think mm-hmm. going back and re-watching them all was was an awesome experience. Like, I, I realized, one, they got so much better. Just like in, <laughs> in the they got way a lot that more funding is them. what they got. <laughs> they got a lot more funding. Just just following the like the stories of Steve Rogers and Tony Stark and, and all the other Avengers, it, it really just like there's a lot of character development there. Um mm-hmm. I, I know that you talked about um especially kind of the Captain America Civil War, you get like, you know, Stark and Rogers fighting and mm-hmm. kind of crossing paths and like reaching you know the opposite end of where they started and i just kind of like accepted that that was like yeah i guess sure but like going back (laughs) and watching it like that was a great point just like understanding and 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 seeing the growth of all the characters because you you really felt like they grew um Mm. and like (laughs) like i i don't know are we are we (laughs) marvel spoiler are are those okay i don't know we've never actually i don't know that we've like really declared (laughs) that have we well okay let's just say in game hit hard like yeah. <laughs> like yeah. there there were a lot of like relationships that i just didn't pick up on in the i don't know 10 years that that arc was coming out mm-hmm. especially through like hawkeye and black widow and everything mm-hmm. that when you watch them all back to back to back to back you're just like oh shit like <laughs> yeah this is this is this is deep yeah um, and, and it, you're right, it is like, I think Iron Man came out in 2007, like the first, you know what I mean? Like the first Iron Man. And I know yeah. that like Hulk was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't Mark Ruffalo, um, but it was like considered to be a part of the same universe, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was intended to be a part of the same like storytelling, even though it had, was it, what's his name? Edward Norton or whatever his name is? I believe so. That sounds right. Yeah. I mean, we're like, yeah, pop culture trivia with Nelson and Dalton. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're not the trivia team exactly. that you want. <laughs> the board game category will do great, but uh, but uh, names yeah. of celebrities is not our strong suit. But anyways, uh, with what's his face? They, they um, that was <laughs> earlier. That was even insert like name here. Insert name here. Um, yeah, and Nelson will edit it later. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure, that was like two thousand four or something. Like it's yeah. been coming out for, like the whole plan. You know, the master plan has been going on for like well over a decade it's like a decade and a half now and you're right that like their consistency in like the characters just like in their theming and their personality and their relationships between the it's like it is an undertaking like an absolute achievement how consistent it is to have been all these different movies who were produced by all the you know by different producers and directed by different directors and you know the actors are growing and there you you can see robert downey jr become a better actor over the course of oh absolutely the iron man and his whole story and it's like how that you know how how did they (laughs) keep it all consistent i I thought it was pretty cool yeah i it it was it 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 was just a really good experience um Mm -hmm. the other thing that i did while that while i was doing that is during each one of the movies um i played a game of marvel champions using the hero (laughs) that was featured in that movie uh, <laughs> so as we were playing Iron Man, I play Iron Man. As we were watching Age of Ultron, I uh, forgot who I played. I think I played Hulk, but I played against Ultron. And so mm-hmm. I tried to make it thematic as I was playing through. That's um, fun. What's the worst movie in the uh, cinematic universe? Does the first Hulk count? <laughs> I actually like that movie a little um, bit. Like, I, don't, I don't know why. It's not, it's not a good movie, but like I like it. Yeah, I think... I, I don't know if it's the worst one. I think my least favorite was Doctor Strange. Um, okay. I I don't know. It just seemed weird. 
Are you not a fan like, of Doctor just, Strange, like in general? I don't, I don't think I'm a fan of Doctor Strange, yeah. uh, which is kind of interesting because I am a huge fan of Scarlet Witch, right? Yeah. So it's not like the mystics that I don't like for whatever reason. I also think like Benedict Cumber Cumberbon is like was a weird <laughs> casting for that after like I had seen him in like Sherlock. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. I, I maybe it was something like that. Maybe I would have liked him a, as a different role, but for whatever reason, it just felt so over the top and so outside of what we would normally see from a marvel movie so maybe that was just it but i think mm-hmm. that was probably my least favorite i don't think it was a bad movie what about what, what was your least favorite um yeah what was my least favorite ah dang it i shouldn't have asked that question now i'm gonna be <laughs> 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 i should have known i was gonna get stuck with it um i didn't i wasn't a big fan of captain marvel but i also just don't okay. like how they've like kind of handled her like character mm-hmm. she just comes like i like actually brie larson and i like her as like an actress yeah. And I do like that she is this like she's this like strong female lead and everything but she just like the way that they have handled her like powers and her like role in the story I think isn't like it just doesn't fit very well. And because she was like set in the past um she doesn't feel like she's like kind of meshing with the rest of like the crew, right? It felt like oh okay like okay, yeah they she's in the past so like that's why she hasn't like met anybody. Um but then like in the present she still has this kind of I don't know, ancillary, like outside feel where she's like not really a part of the team. She's just like a superhuman who has like aligned interests or whatever. So I'm just not a big fan of yeah. her as like how she's No, I, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. One last thing I want to say before we, before we move from this topic is that, um, have, have you seen WandaVision or, uh, um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier? No, both are on the list. I've heard, you know, good things. I love both of them. Yeah. Um, great. They were, I have not been a fan of a lot of the Marvel TV shows that have come out. Mm-hmm. Um, just, I, I'm actually watching through Jessica Jones right now. I'm, I'm really enjoying that. The first season is phenomenal. Of it Jessica has like Jones. one of the best bad guys of all time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I, I, I went into him with the being a little skeptics, uh, mm-hmm. but WandaVision especially was, I thought, phenomenal. I, awesome. I straight up watched that in like one day. I was just like, "This is awesome." It's a very <laughs> weird and like, I, like the first two episodes are just strange, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but but it's it's a really cool cinematic um, implementation as well as a very interesting story. Oh, I, yeah. I love the limited series too. It's like six to nine episodes total. I, I love limited series in general, where it's like we're gonna have like a goal and we're just gonna like complete this goal. It's not gonna be like this ongoing right. series where you're not gonna know when it's gonna end. Like we're gonna make every minute of this show count. Yeah, no, absolutely. Also, it's just really cool to see the uh, see see Eminem's nemesis as Captain America. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget that that's the same guy. Yeah, yeah. right. I, I like. I was just like watching through like random music videos, and yeah. like Eight Mile came on. And I was like, oh yeah, cool. I watched that. I was like, wait a second. Wait a second. That's, that's Sam Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> he's not from the three one three. Okay, uh, yeah. So, so that's kind of what I've been doing with my life. What, <laughs> what yeah. have you been? Uh, have you been playing or reading anything recently? Yeah. So it's been a while, you know, since we've been able to catch up. I was trying to think of like the things I wanted to talk through. The, I think the main thing that I have consumed has been like Rise of Kyoshi. So, oh yeah. I had talked to, I think I had talked about it a little bit in our Red Rising episode, but um, so I like, think so. It set in the Avatar: The Last Airbender universe. There are two novels: The Rise of Kyoshi and like Shadow of Kyoshi. I think it's titled. Okay. I believe that there's supposed to be like a third or more books that are kind of like written by this same author. Um, are they all? Are they all supposed to be about Kyoshi? I, I believe at least these two were. Um, they center around <laughs> the title like, kind of gave it away right yeah like shadows of kiyoshi it's like well maybe it's about Roku, <laughs> but no it's not it turns out it's about kiyoshi and so there's a couple of things that like that i wanted to mention and this is going to be there's not gonna be any spoilers here for avatar the last Ember, which you absolutely should go watch so that we can have non-spoiler or spoiler free discussions but oh um, for now no spoilers uh, but Kiyoshi I need all of our the, listeners to send us a message saying that they have watched Avatar: The Last Airbender, <laughs> and then I would feel comfortable talking about it. Yeah. So if you yeah. can do that, just just send them to Dalton. That'd be um, great. And just let him know. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But Kiyoshi is uh, it's a prequel. So Kiyoshi is two avatars before Aang, um, who's the main character of Avatar: The Last Airbender. Um, and there's a couple of really great things that the book series does. Um, I think. If you are a fan, it is absolutely worth the read. It's not long, and it 
it handles Avatar universe, the Avatar universe in like a very adult way, which was very a very fun break from like this kind of childish setting of the TV show. And I guess childish is maybe too strong of a word, right? Like people die. Um, it's not like it's a totally like rosy friendly show, but it has a very like lighthearted right. kind of feel to it. Um, yeah, I saw something the other day that was like, it's not for children, it's suitable for children or something like that. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like like children can watch it, but it's not necessarily for children. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good way to put it, and I think it's fitting because like Avatar: The Last The Last Airbender is told from Aang's it's Aang's story, and it's told from his perspective, and he's um, an air nomad, and he's very free willed and he's a pacifist and all this stuff. And Kyoshi is the earth avatar and Kyoshi will straight up murder a bitch. Like she doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> she's Kyoshi like, crazy. Kyoshi crazy. If you're, if she's if like her default position is like, I could solve this problem by killing this person. And she entertains <laughs> that. And she will often like deviate from that, but she will often not deviate from that. And just like, kind of Jeez. resolve to that's crazy. There is violence in this book. Like it is, it is not oh, a wow. children's okay. book. Um, people die like violent deaths and they die Jeez. like in a Korra, which is the follow-up series to Avatar, which is told about the next Avatar in the cycle. Um, it is like a little bit more adult, right? Like they get into like, yeah. oh, airbenders can kill people by suffocating them. Like we didn't talk about that oh. in Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Um, That's nice. And they get into just kind of like, okay, if you really wanted to kill, like hurt or maim or kill someone with bending as we've set up magic in this universe, like how could that be done? And Kiyoshi really like actually kind of plays further into that. And so I think that's like rewarding as someone who experienced the Avatar The Last Airbender when I was in like middle and high school. Um, and now that right. I'm older, it's it's really rewarding to um, to read the book. It also like it takes the opportunity to build into not just Kiyoshi, who was two avatars before, um, but her mentor, which would have been her previous avatar, Avatar Kurik, who is like the who's a waterbender before her and who gets like very little screen time in um, Avatar The Last Airbender. They sort of make him out to be kind of like a surfer bro, like airhead almost like kind of a frat star <laughs> yeah i really want to see him <laughs> yeah exactly and they they really build a lot into the depth of his character and so I, I think they just they took kind of the opportunities of a prequel to do like the right things you know they they build into really the areas of the story that you kind of want to see more of they expand they just expand the universe they expand the magic system a little bit it's a prequel so it's hard to expand it past like what is it? what you're already told in the sequels, right? But they expand maybe your right. like understanding or your knowledge of it. Um, they build into characters who are interesting. It ha- it does have like maybe some. I, I think the the writer's a bit young, and so it has some things that are like maybe a little bit predictable, but not unforgivable. You know, okay, um, just from yeah. like a storytelling perspective. So yeah, um, I don't know. I, I I very much enjoyed it. So I, I would you recommend it if you short. enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah, oh, not yeah. not like short, short. Um, but not like Game of Thrones or something. What what are they? What are they around? Yeah, they're not long. One is like fourteen ish hours, and the other is like eleven. On oh, okay. we always so do things. Th- by those hours, are actually pretty short. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty short. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy <laughs> so, to get through. Okay, yeah, that, that's really nice. Cool. Yeah, no, I, I I'm excited. Those those are in the queue. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll be excited to to read those and talk to you about them a little bit more. So for sure, let's take some icebreaker questions. We haven't taken too many icebreaker questions recently. I'm feeling I'm feeling yeah. a gap in my life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think we have time to knock out knock out a couple. Um, do you want to do a book or a board game one? Um, we just talked about some book stuff, so let's do a board game one. Okay, let's do a board game one. Mix okay. it up for the fireside episodes. So this one is from Tucker. So this is a long one. So let I'll buckle uh, in. I, I don't know about the answer. I'm just like looking at the text on my phone. I'm like, I don't know if I can get through this without a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay, so... <laughs> oh, crap. I'm already going. Okay, from Tucker. You have to get someone who has never played board games to play Food Chain Magnate or whatever heavy game you are deep diving into next in five games. What five games do you play to prepare them for it? Assume they like strategy games and will generally enjoy the process. Okay. Okay. okay, so build a path, kind of thing. Build build a path. I, I, I think that this one is suited that we can probably do this together, rather than yeah. each coming up with our own. So yeah. do do we want to stick with like a food chain magnate? Is that is that the the end goal, or is there something else that we want to? Yeah, I like the I like the game that Tucker proposed. Let's let's build it. How about you you start off with like the basic intro game to get us to f- uh, food chain, and then we'll just go like we'll trade off. You know what I mean? Like I'll I'll pick the next game. 
and what kind of a time okay yeah all I, the I like way up. so food chain magnate is a very interactive game it's an economic game where mm-hmm. your moves are based off of what other players do so you have to have both strategy and tactics and you have to be able to shift your strategy based on how other people are interacting in the game yeah so no one you have not played any game before Mm -hmm. um to get us there so i think we're going to start out with between two cities so between two cities has a tiling element so you kind of are starting to get the idea of adjacency and uh distance and kind of you know reds need to be next to blues which isn't exactly what you're doing in food chain magnate but Mm -hmm. positioning is very important in food chain magnate and that's a we've talked about between two cities as a as a great gateway game Mm -hmm. uh, because you have people to your right and left helping you and so i think that that would be a comfortable step into that first game on our path to food chain magnate so that that's the first one what's your next what's the next game so it feels a little bit still in um in gateway games but i think actually Catan can make a really good next step because okay like someone has just played a a first initial game right you're maybe not wanting to step up the complexity too much but it's going to give a little bit of like resource management right you're going to start to get like because there's a lot of that in in food chain magnet you're trying to make the orders you know and so there's this feeling yeah exactly so there's this feeling of like what is what do I need in order to get the things that I have to get done done on a later turn? So you're going to practice resource management. And then Catan is maybe not quite an economy game, but it has feelings of an economy game. You know how like basically there is a trade economy going on in the game and you can like short the market of, you know, ore or whatever you want in uh, in Catan and then drive up the price. Um, but there's not like a money element. But it's going to give this like kind of supply and demand feel. I think it's going to start to like build that in. So that would be my suggestion next. I, I know that like, Catan is like, oh yeah, it's like the you know one of the standard gateway games. But I think here it actually fits. No, I, I I think that yeah, no, that that's a really good pick. So for number three, I don't think it's a game that you have played, but it's called mm-hmm. Smartphone Inc. Um, mm. I think I've talked about it on on the podcast before, but Smartphone yeah. Inc. I've definitely is, seen the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a really pretty it's great art. Uh, yeah. But Smartphone Inc. is is a economic game that seems a lot more complicated than it actually is. But basically, you're a CEO running a company and you are trying to sell smartphones throughout the world to customers that require 4G. They require games. They won't want to pay more than $4 for a phone. Mm. And so there's your action selection is like these two tiles that you have to overlay and whatever icons are showing then those are the actions that you get to take that round. So it's mm-hmm. it probably takes about an hour to an hour and a half in a three or four player game, but it, it has a lot of the price setting. It has mm. which like is like if you have two plus signs on showing, your price goes up two. So it's not like a food chain magnate where you're yep. very, you know, deliberate in setting your price. It's kind of more of a you know, th- this is kind of what's showing. This is what the price is. There's a lot of strategy to it, uh, but it's it's not as thinky. The other the other thing that is uh, kind of a tie-in to food chain magnate is whoever has the lowest price goes first, which is mm. which is a concept um, that you really need to pay attention to in food chain magnate. That the customer is going to buy the lowest the lowest priced object, and also mm-hmm. that just selling a lot at very low cost is not necessarily a winning strategy. Yeah. Um, because if you sell, <laughs> if you sell <laughs> five things at five dollars, that's not as good <laughs> necessarily as, sell, as selling five or three things at uh, ten dollars. Or I guess it's the same. Yeah. But like, um, <laughs> but so the, it it starts to help you think about that quantity versus price. It's nowhere near as complex as a food chain magnate, and so it's it's I think a really good stepping stone into that next step. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Um, for my next one. Um, I'm going to go with Imperial. And okay. I think the reason I'm going with Imperial is because you need... To, I, I, so, like, Imperial it has elements of a dudes on a map game. Yes. And it also has this element of, like, owning stock in a in a company or specifically a country in Imperial, which, like, both of those are not are not actually a good fit for... Directly for, for Food Chain Magnate. But the reason that I bring it up is because you really need to get in the in the mood of, like, I'm not playing a single player 
solitaire, like I'm doing something that is extremely cutthroat. Like you need to start to okay. learn yeah. how to how to undercut another player. <laughs> how to be um, mean. How to be exactly, mean. exactly. And realizing that like the the feeling of like, okay, realizing this option gives me 20 victory points. This other option gives me 15 victory points. I should obviously take the 20 victory point option. That's true unless option A that gives you 20 victory points gives your opponents 10 and option B, which gives <laughs> you 15, gives your opponents zero. That's the better option, right? right? But you have yeah. to be willing to undercut your opponents and Imperial will, I think, help Ooh, to I like, like that. kind of teach that while also <laughs> making sure that there's still a little bit of like, hey, maybe there's some mutual benefit that can be gained here, right? There, There is some like tit for tat and there is some you're, you scratch my back kind of going on in both games and also the ability to assess value and then bail if your thing isn't working right yeah Um, which is i think more i think more of an option in food chain than it initially looks like you can definitely switch strategies if you need to it's hard but like and it'll be a little bit painful (laughs) but you you can do it if you need to (laughs) but you can do it i i was skeptical when you first said imperial but i i see i see where you're coming from now did i get you there so yeah yeah so i (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so so number five which is the last game before we get to break out the uh amazing game that is food chain magnate um it w- would i think have to be brass birmingham yeah um so brass birmingham we we've talked about it before on the podcast but you're competing entrepreneurs in the 18th 17th 18th century mm-hmm. um in birmingham imagine that yeah. um there are trains. <laughs> in the surrounding area <laughs> there are trains it's uh it's a, it's a great game but that that's a very it's another really economic game where you're playing the players, not necessarily just playing the the single player solitaire. Um, sure. And uh, I think what where you get a lot of bang for your buck when comparing brass to food chain magnate is the uh, is the distance. So brass mm. and food chain mm-hmm. magnate both have a very uh, Food chain magnate is more finicky, but they're both pretty finicky on calculating distance and what resources you can use. And it's mm-hmm. typically the closest, or it is the closest in brass uh, for a lot of the resources. Yep. And so building your routes and placing your your industry tiles in a in a spot that allows you to utilize uh, your own or someone who's not in the leads resources is really important, which is also you're, you're always measuring distance. You're always calculating price and trying to figure out how to you, how to sell your supply rather than someone else selling their supply in food chain magnate. And so just kind of getting that Mm -hmm. spatial thinking, I think brass is a, is a great last stepping stone. Yeah. I think that last point that you brought up is super important. The both games separate supply and demand. And so you, because they're both economy games, um, but you can spend time generating demand or you can spend time generating supply or you can do both, but your demand is not what your supply is going to be consumed by, if that makes sense. Like, in other words, I can spend all my time generating just supply if everybody else is generating demand, right? Um, And then I can basically like steal it or or the other way around. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In both games. And like the first time it happens to you, you go like, you asshole. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> I get it. I get yep. why you did that. Yeah. That's oh, how absolutely. the game is supposed to be played. So it'll teach you that before you step into food chain, Magda. So <laughs> it's a good choice. I like it. So we got we, we got our stepping stones are going to be uh, between two cities, mm-hmm. uh, going into Catan, going yep. into Smartphone Inc., into Imperial, then Brass Birmingham, and then food chain magnate. Yep. I think right there you got an epic weekend set up for you. So. Yeah, that's a that's a hell of a weekend. If you can pull that <laughs> all off. Awesome. And, yeah, your Friday night games into your Saturday night games, and by Sunday it's like gotcha, bitch. <laughs> got him. Let's uh. So so my wife sent me a, a another icebreaker. It's a okay. it's a book one that that is going to be I think pretty quick, but it's going to be a fun one. So it's from her, and it's pick a favorite book, show, movie character, and then pick a Disney song that you think fits best with their personality or story. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it'd be I think it'd be fun to end on this one. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's like my so initial to, mind just goes like what? And it's like yeah. That's such a good idea. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Todoroki from My Hero Academia and Let It Snow. <laughs> that's perfect you win i don't think i'm doing one 
I can probably that's, that's, awesome. that's like a, that's a cop out answer. I can come up with something better than that, but okay, that's yeah. what like initially I like, came to mind. <laughs> if you have not seen My Hero Academia, he is a character that uh, can use both ice and fire, um, but specifically ignores his fire side, um, and like just uses his ice whenever he can. So that 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 was the joke. If you want yeah. the joke explained to you so that it's funny. Now you've been explained to you and it's not funny. So enjoy that. <laughs> so as you like think about this question, do you think about a character first or do you think about the song? I'm, I'm going through Disney songs. You're going through songs in your head? <laughs> yeah, I'm going through songs and instead of trying to figure out a character and then a song. So I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast, but like the like really what cemented Nelson and I's like <laughs> friendship was like freshman year. We like got it into our heads to make a Spotify playlist for like just disney songs and so we that was like that was very <laughs> very or we stayed up like way too late yeah. making this. <laughs> oh yeah it was great it was fantastic like, dude what about tarzan like oh my god tarzan and just like add like four <laughs> songs so good. <laughs> the whole soundtrack just on the playlist thank you phil collins um, yes so anyways MVP. so point is this you know this yeah mvp this uh <laughs> this question really hits home for, it's a very personal near and dear to our friendship yes. type of question oh I, absolutely then we started doing Disney Saturdays after that. We were, we were like we spent our college freshman year watching Disney <laughs> Disney movies on Saturdays. <laughs> okay, so I I think I think I've thought I think I've thought enough, and I think I have to stick with this one just just because it, it, I I like it so much. But it is Darrow from Red Rising, which we just talked about. Oh but yep. it's kind of on my head, but it's gonna be part of your world, <laughs> Darrow from Red Rising. So <laughs> part of your world from Little Mermaid. <laughs> 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 which is all about going to the surface yeah and being part of something <laughs> oh my god that works so well on so many different levels i love it yeah so, and i would just love seeing so, so darrow that, that's my in answer. a bikini singing it you know i yeah straight up i would yeah with with a little crab uh <laughs> exactly get a little get a little cosmere crossover there <laughs> <laughs> the oh, joke man. there is Brandon Sanderson really likes to have crabs in his stories. So I don't know why. Everywhere. <laughs> He's a fan of crustaceans. <laughs> I can't fault him. That's a good one to pick like a pick a coming of age character. Cause I was like scrolling through our, our Spotify playlist to think of Disney songs and I came across like Zero to Hero and it's like that would work, you know, for Tara. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Like go, go the, the distance, distance just... which we listen to every day after our workout. That yeah, that was our pump up song for. Uh, <laughs> that was our, our pump up song. Yeah, we're strange people. For, uh, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You you guys listen to the podcast, not me. Uh, <laughs> I would exactly. I, I'm I'm just thinking. There's so many that work well for Darrow. I'll make a man out of you. Which is all yeah. about you know transformation. <laughs> That's a good point. I'm so I'm gonna go with. Um, we haven't talked to him about the episode. I've been. I've been like super busy. And so when we get, when Nelson and I get super busy, we re listen through books that we've already read because it's like you can put it on the background. Right. It's super easy to do. So I've been rereading through um, Aragon. And so I'm going to okay. go yeah, with yeah. Aragon with Accidentally in Love. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> for two reasons. One, because he accidentally falls in love with an elf. And for two, because he accidentally <laughs> falls in love with a dragon and that like yeah. takes over his whole storyline. <laughs> Okay, yeah. No, I like that a lot. Which is technically a DreamWorks. Okay, if you're going to get... You're, yeah, <laughs> you, the listener, you're going to get technical on me. Yes, I recognize that Shrek is not a Disney movie, but it, I think it answers the spirit of the question, so I'm sticking with the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's a it's a great answer. Yeah, no, th- those are those are great icebreakers. I <laughs> I really like it when I, I can think about Disney songs and... Uh, an epic fantasy in the same in the same thought. I know, uh, right? I really like when the icebreaker but, questions make it like really stretch our minds of like, okay, how could I yeah. make this work? And what is, yeah. what is answering this question actually look like? So, <laughs> thank you. They're both yeah, great. Absolutely. Thank you both for submitting them. Yeah. So so that's gonna do it for us tonight on on this fireside episode. We'll we'll probably do another fireside episode just because I have absolutely no energy to prepare for <laughs> to prepare for for another one. Right. But um, I, I also. Since we haven't done a couple, we got a lot to talk about. So <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. So, yep. um, so, so I, I'm excited. Uh, 
we uh you can reach out to us on any social media that's going to be instagram or discord is probably your best options but we can yep. you, you can also find us on facebook or twitter um to reach out to us let us know what, what your thoughts are what, what would be your five games to get us to a uh, food chain magnate or what song would you pair with your favorite uh fantasy character mm-hmm. because i i think i think we're gonna i think we're gonna get some good answers there i we're gonna I, get I'm some mileage out see. of those <laughs> we're gonna get some mileage out of those so uh i'm excited to see that plastered all over social media for sure but really great talking with you as always um, as always at bud. some point we can uh we can do this in person again so can't wait <laughs> <laughs> yep cheers buddy cheers